Okay, I've, I've actually haven't seen this before. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 old technologies kids don't recognize. Beckman, get a sample of this. For this list, we're looking at various pieces of tech from the 19th and 20th centuries that have long since been replaced by something more modern or eliminated entirely. Can you think of a piece of tech that we no longer use? Let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, dial up internet. On the mark, get set. We're riding on the internet. Cyberspace set free. Hello, virtual reality. Consider this. If you had to stream your high quality music on the first modems ever made, it would take almost 39 hours to download a single song. Okay, that's probably an exaggeration, but you get it. By comparison, the same tune would take more like half a second to reach you on a modern day gigabit connection. The pains of slow internet are something most kids will never understand or even appreciate. Nor the fact that you couldn't use the phone when you were online because all internet access went through a regular telephone line. So remember kids, when Netflix needs to buffer, it could be so much worse. Number nine, a credit card imprinter. Today, everyone swipes, taps, or inserts a card to pay for items and the transaction shows up on our online bill. Yet for years, credit cards were handled in a far less on-demand fashion. Retailers would take your card and place it over a metal plate that had the name of the company imprinted on it. A piece of carbon paper would be added on top, and then they would swipe the machine back and forth to create an imprint of the card numbers with their vendor info. The buyer would keep a copy, and the shop owner would send one to the credit card company and get paid. Ask an old retailer about it. They probably have one hiding under the counter. Number 8. A milk shoot. Used to be. A man had to go to the store to buy himself a pitcher of milk. Yeah, but men got lazy. They wanted that milk delivered right to the door. For years, having milk delivered to your home was as common as mowing the lawn. To help facilitate this service, many homes were outfitted with what they called a milk chute. The chute was merely a small space within the walls surrounded by an inner and outer door. Old milk bottles would be placed from inside for the milkman to pick them up and replace them with new ones. It was small enough that no one could enter the home through it, but large enough to place the bottles. With the days of milk delivery long gone, people with this tiny door space are left wondering, what the heck is that for? Number seven, photo film. We bet good money that Steven Sasson had no idea what his digital camera would do to the photography industry. The technology of digital was esoteric, expensive, unusual. Uh, not many people understood it. There were no consumer products. I was proposing that this would eventually someday in the distant future become a consumer product. Having existed for more than 100 years, film photography was the standard for decades. Cameras would expose the film to a small snippet of light, causing the photo to imprint on the film itself. Then through a chemical process, the film was developed into regular photographs. Youth today are so used to snapping photos with their phones that they have no idea there was a time when you had to wait several weeks before you'd see how the pictures turned out. Number six, tube testers. The vacuum tube is the fundamental element in all modern communication devices. Long before the invention of the transistor, vacuum tubes were key to the control of an electric current. The tubes were used in countless electronic devices and even powered the world's first computers. Produced in a wide variety of sizes and types, the vacuum tube is the fundamental element in modern radio communication. ENIAC, the first digital programmable computer, used more than 17,000 vacuum tubes alone. Since these tubes were so common, testers were built to determine the status and efficiency of a vacuum tube. The product of this magic lamp we call a vacuum tube is not light, but electricity. Electrons set free from the atoms of matter that hold them captive. Found in many places, including even grocery stores, people could come in and test their tubes directly on the machine. They faded out as transistors eventually replaced vacuum tubes in modern electronics. Number five, pagers. Can I ask you a question? Do you know if the hotel's pager friendly? What do you mean? 
I'm not getting a sig on my beeper. In a time before cell phones became a thing, pagers were a highly popular means to contact someone who wasn't home. They were typically very small and clipped onto your belt, and had a single-line LCD display. When you got paged, the machine would vibrate, and a phone number would appear on the screen implying you should call it back. They were quick and cheap and easy to maintain, and made it far easier to stay in touch. Pagers eventually began to include two-way communication, much like texting. They've long since been replaced by regular cell phones, but are still quite popular among doctors and Captain Marvel. What? You think I'm gonna crank call you? For emergencies only, okay? Number four, a typewriter eraser. In the days before Google Docs or Microsoft Word, the only way you could type something out was on a typewriter. Typewriters made their debut in the late 1800s, just as the world was seeing an explosion in communications technology. Invented over 150 years ago, the typewriter used a series of carved metal hammers that would strike a sheet of paper through a ribbon of ink. The ink would imprint on the page and shift the paper to the left ever so slightly. The biggest issue was if you made a mistake, you either had to retype the whole thing or use something like a typewriter eraser. It allows you to erase the ink in the same way a rubber eraser removes pencil writing. No autocorrect here, just good old fashioned muscle. Number three, library card catalogs. Do you have a grandparent who keeps their old recipes on tiny little rectangular cards? It might surprise you to hear that those cards were a little miracle in the world of libraries. Long before we could just type something into Google and get an answer, people went to libraries and looked up books to learn about many things. Every one of them had an associated card and a catalog that anyone could use to figure out where the book was in a library. You still had to decode the archaic Dewey Decimal System to find it, but the card catalogs themselves were found in virtually every library across the globe. Number two, record adapters. Let's set aside the fact that vinyl records are still around and may even be making a bit of a comeback. The warmth that comes out of the sound of vinyl just doesn't compare to anything else. By and large, the youth of today know their music through streaming services or MP3s. Prior to that era, we had CDs, cassettes, 8-track tapes, and of course, records. Vinyl albums have been around for years, and the two most common formats have always been the 7-inch and 12-inch record. Many 7-inch albums had a much larger hole in the center, preventing them from being played on a standard record player. But if you had the little 45 RPM adapter, you could put it in the middle of your 7-inch record and play it on any machine. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. DOS we won't call it the first operating system, but for all intents and purposes, it was the first one to gain mass acceptance. No PC should be without it. No PC should be without it. It was Microsoft's MS-DOS that was originally licensed to IBM for use on their own PC-based computers. From there, it became the de facto operating system for all IBM-compatible machines. I've learned just enough DOS to be able to demo this to you. It's quite intuitive. D-I-R here. There we go. One, two, three. And here's one, two, three running in a window. Uh, and I may find out, I may be able to bring up a file here. Slash F. It's a wonderful user interface. R. Countless business applications and games were written for the DOS platform, which was entirely text based. It ultimately helped Microsoft launch their Windows graphical user interface, which would eventually replace DOS. Excuse me, Bill? Yes, DOS? Bill, I brought you the PC. I helped make Windows. And I'm running over 400 million PCs today. You aren't going to do this, are you, Bill? Sorry, DOS. It is survived by several other copycats of the OS and serves as the inspiration for the command prompt mode still available on Windows PCs today. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.